What is the best SEO Chrome extension in 2025? Chrome extensions are one of the most powerful ways you can quickly mine data from your competitors, know what headings and text and content they're using, as well as figure out all kinds of amazing details just really speed up your SEO process. I don't know an expert SEO that doesn't use a handful of their favorite Chrome extensions. Now let's just jump in with my favorite SEO Chrome extension which is SEO meta in one click. If you've been following me for a while, you know this tool. I use it all the time. I get comments all the time about what it is. So I thought it'd be great to share today. I'm gonna show you how that tool works, why it's so useful for your SEO, and really why you should use it. But then also, I can't wait to show you the several other game-changing Chrome extensions later in this list. So first off, what is SEO meta in one click? Well, if we go to Google, say, search mattress or anything like that, we can open up the top pages on Google and click SEO meta in one click. And in a single click, we get all kinds of data here. So you can see we have a summary, we have headers, images, and links. Really, the only section we use is summary and headers for the most part. So first, we get a lot of data here on the two top ranking pages. We get the SEO title tag. But of course, you can also see that just up here in the Chrome tab, so nothing big. We get the SEO meta description but we also could have kind of seen that in the Google search results themselves. But here's where this becomes so useful. We get the heading structure. And so already we see H1 to H6, and we see they have two H1s, 10 H2s, and so on. And if we go to the header section here, we can see in even more detail. Let me take a step back and teach you about headings. Um, so I'll make this brief if you already know this, but HTML headers are very important from H1 all the way to H6. And it's essentially the structure of a document. So back in school, you had a Word document and you have the title and then you have a heading and then you have a subheading and a subplot, subtopic. That is what HTML headers are. And these headers or headings are very important for SEO. It's how Google determines the structure of a page. It's how they give priority to different keywords. On almost all ranking pages, you'll see the H1 having the main keyword. And so this is a very useful thing to look at for your own website, as well as competitors, to see what keywords they're putting in here and what they're all doing. Again, keywords and headings are a ranking factor. So already we can see kind of how this website is structured in terms of the H1s. And if this was my site, I'd say don't have two H1s, very traditional uh, best practice. Um, but then some H2s, et cetera. And if we look at Casper, we can take a look here. We see they have no H1, 15 H2s, seven H3s. And so they're a little bit all over the place as well. The no H1 is definitely a problem, but still. Uh, so you can kind of see how they're arranging their content and how they're setting it all up. And you know, traditionally these heading tags are, are these points usually, the more bolded big text. Um, and so this is very useful for taking a look at a website and understanding the structure really quickly understanding how they're adding in certain keywords, how they're optimizing this page. You know, they have a frequently asked questions section. It's very useful, as well as just understanding the best practices, which Google is pretty open about, and, and learning how to, to fix a heading structure. There's a couple other goodies that you can see on here. We have the URL as well as the canonical. So sometimes you'll have pages that are canonical to the wrong URL. Now this gets kind of techy, so I won't go too deep into it, but there's a couple fun things you can experiment. You can get quickly the Google page speed optimization score. You can check your some of this data, like schema data. You can also look at all of this stuff so you can check out your, whether your page is mobile friendly, whether it has GT metrics, analyze the page speed with Google page speed metrics, just all the kind of SEO general stuff that you can check out and see how your website is performing. Next one on the list, I'm gonna pick an interesting one because it is absolutely amazing, which is Harpa AI. Now this isn't specifically an SEO tool, but it is an AI tool that gives AI access to your browser. And I'm not gonna go too deep into this because you can go very deep, but it's extremely useful for a lot of SEO behaviors. So essentially you open this up and it's a little chat bot like ChatGPT, but it's connected to your browser and it has access to the entire website that you're looking at, so Mattress Firm. So if I want to ask questions about Mattress Firm or anything like that, 
all I have to do is make the tool page aware and I can say, what page am I on? And it will connect with ChatGPT and actually let ChatGPT have access to your web page. So, you know, you, you provided the tool gives it the homepage of Mattrix Firm. And you can do a lot with this. So you can paraphrase phase, you know, the content here. You can say, can you give me some content relevant to this page? There's literally endless options here. You can also get it to, if you're creative, you can get it to do things like export the navigation. If you want to create a similar website, I may not do that here. I think this website's made a little different. Can you return the navigation of this website? And you can just do so much fun stuff with this. And you can see here, I just asked it to return the navigation and uh, it may not do a perfect job, but it's doing fairly well. So it's saying main navigation, and then those are what's under it, and then shop by category, uh, shop our deals, shop by size. So if you wanted to replicate this competitor's navigation, which is a huge portion of e-com SEO, then you can look at this and figure out, okay, I need a shop by size section, I need pages on queen, king, bull, et cetera. So there's all kinds of fun stuff you can do for competitor research, content, all kinds of amazing things. I'll let you guys play around with that. I just wanted to drop that in because it's amazing. Another really good, just quick tool is Word Counter. And what this will do is just give you how much content are with is within when you scroll down and select any amount of text. Now it doesn't work perfectly because here, like we have content under accordions, etc. But it'll give you a rough idea that see this is 500 words. Of course, that's not actually fully accurate because they have tons of content within here. But for a traditional blog post and things like that, you can really quickly get a word count of what your competitors are using. Uh, definitely a pretty interesting tool that you can quickly use. Okay, now we couldn't talk about SEO Chrome extensions without talking about SEMrush and Ahrefs. They make the sort of Swiss army knife, which is a common term in SEO, of uh, SEO Chrome extensions. They give you all kinds of data. I'm gonna share both. So I'm gonna share you the Ahrefs uh, toolbar as well as SEO Quake, which is the SEMrush version. So first off, both of them give you some sort of volume at the top of the search results. And I might need to actually turn this off. So first we're gonna look at Ahrefs. Um, they give you some keyword difficulty, search volume, global search volume, all kinds of random stuff, cost per click. You can give an overview that will jump up into your uh, Ahrefs account. And really the magic happens underneath each search result. And here it gives you the DR, it also gives you the UR. And these are link building metrics. So how powerful is the overall domain is your domain rating? And how powerful is that individual page? And that's your UR. And you can see this is a home page, and so it gets a lot of backlinks towards that individual page, increasing its UR. It also tells you how much traffic that page has versus the traffic for the overall website. So if we look at Casper, we see their overall website gets a million traffic per month. Um, this page is saying zero, not that might be a glitch, um, or this is an uncommon page to be ranking here, which can also happen. These are very useful pieces of analysis because if you're going up against someone that is a DR, I mean, this is a very competitive search result, a DR of 81 with a million traffic. If you have a DR of 10 and you have 5,000 traffic, it's going to be a very competitive search result to try to rank on. So this is a great way to diagnose competition very quickly and see, okay, these are big websites. Um, maybe we should go for a less competitive term while we're growing our SEO. So there's definitely a lot of benefit to these tools. I will say in general, I find the Ahrefs tool to be better than SEMrush's. Uh, this is the essential information. You can also pop over to the overall website review there. You can check out the individual page there. So it's very useful for just speeding up this process. Now, SEO Quake also does similar things. I just think it's a little bit less intuitive. It's, um, it's not quite as good. And I think I can just remove this here so that we can give our eyes a break. So again, it gives you some keyword difficulty, but then it loads forever. So that's kind of annoying. So there, it gives you some keyword difficulty. It doesn't give you the search volume, which seems just an easy thing they could have done. It does give you the authority score here. It gives you the number of links, gives you the page visits, total visits, 
um, stuff like that. All of that's useful, but they also give you all this random stuff like the who is. I don't know why you'd want the who is on for SEO, but it gives you kind of similar sort of features. Having these specific data within the SERPs, such as authority score, DR, traffic, all that's very good for quickly diagnosing a page and a search result for whether you should try to rank for that, whether it's too competitive, or just like how many backlinks will you need to rank for this page, how much traffic, things of that nature where you can start to dig in deep. So um, as you can tell, I have a lot of different Chrome extensions here. Ooh, let's jump into the Google Search Console one. I think this is one of my favorites that most people don't have access to. And my editor will have to blur some of this out for uh, client's sake, but let me show you what this Chrome extension can do. It's very cool. So what this is, is it's G tool. So it's um, gsctool.com. You do have to pay for this one, so it's not free, but it can do quite a lot um, if you're working with specific kinds of websites. So the primary use of this tool is really for bulk removals as well as bulk indexing. So if you have a website that's getting a ton of weird URLs indexed, and you know, Google Search Console has this removal tool, but they only let you do one URL at a time. So it's kind of a nightmare to do that for a lot of URLs. Uh, this tool will allow you to just upload the list and remove tons of URLs from Google's index. This is good because uh, the more you save money for Google, tell them they don't have to crawl these URLs, they'll, they'll benefit. Um, it also allows bulk indexing. So if you're noticing you have some indexing issues, meaning Google isn't picking up your content or you have hundreds of pages that aren't indexed right now, you can bulk submit these to be indexed using Google's tool, um, which Google usually takes forever. So you have to like wait through a loading and it's horrible. So really this main thing that this tool does is uh, bulk removals and bulk indexing. Um, but I also kind of love that it adds some interesting, you know, visuals and stuff. So if you compare last three months compared to the previous three months, it will give you just little interesting pieces of data such as the actual percent increase over last month versus uh, the previous period on both impressions, uh, you know, position and all of those things. And so I don't know why, but I absolutely love that. Um, after that, GSC tool can do a lot. So you can check out more in detail on their website if those, if you're a big Google Search Console person. But after that, there's also a really good one. Um, I don't use it too much, but better rejects in Google Search Console. So if I click here, if you don't know how to use uh, regex, I think it is. Um, if you don't know how to use that within uh, Google Search Console very well, this will give you very easy stuff. So like you can do query as a question. And if you apply this, uh, it will just show you all the keywords that are a question, you know, so like that include how and this, you know, why all of those keywords. So you can do this normally in Google Search Console. It just requires some knowledge of regular expressions and how those work. You gotta copy and paste them a lot. So uh, this tool is just awesome for quickly getting that. You can also check things like transactional intent, looking for coupons, reviews, whether a query starts with or ends with a query, all kinds of stuff. URLs with different levels, so that was interesting. So if you're looking at different subfolders, you can dig even deeper there. So tons of fun stuff that you can do there. So these last ones are pretty basic, but very useful in certain situations, which is this tool simply puts a little square icon on all nofollow links. So if you're doing link building and you build a link from a website and they set it as nofollow, you instantly know. Also, if you have nofollow links on your website that shouldn't be nofollow, you instantly know. And then redirect path is a very useful one too. That just lets you know the entire path that it took to get to this URL. So if you're dealing with your one redirects, redirect loops, any of this kind of technical SEO stuff, that can be a great tool. Anyway, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I, will, I will stop myself so that this video doesn't go on too long, but leave a like and a comment if you're interested. Let me know what your favorite Chrome extensions are. I'll try them out and maybe I'll make a follow up to this video and, and share some of your guys' stuff. So please drop your favorite Chrome extension and I'll like it, pin it, all that stuff. Thank you guys for your time. Subscribe, we're posting videos every week. So uh, I'm excited for, to have you along. Thank you.